this remote desert testing ground, experts from New Mexico Tech replicate and explode bombs used by terrorists. On this day, there's a sense of urgency. After Boston, what are you worried about? Could this be the future of domestic terrorism? Well, you're always worried about copycats. Um, you know, are more and more people uh, going to be using this? This is a pressure cooker bomb, similar to the bombs in Boston, and we're about to set it off. All right, going to do the countdown? In the wrong hands, we already know how deadly this bomb can be, and we're not taking any chances. For safety reasons, we've had to retreat to this mountaintop here. We are now over a quarter of a mile away from where we left that pressure cooker. But that's still not far enough to avoid flying shrapnel. So we're watching this, from inside a bunker. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow. That white smoke looks just like what we saw in Boston. Yep. I could feel it all the way up here. Oh, yeah. That shockwave will travel all the way. But down below is the well, real uh, shock. Uh, at this point, we're looking for fragments. Uh, One bomb turned into thousands of weapons, scattered more than 100 yards. This was part of the pressure cooker, now mangled and razor sharp. No wonder so many people got hurt. Instead of nails, we filled the pot with nuts from a hardware store. Shot out like bullets, they pierced plywood. Some even melted from the heat. Look at the back of it. How fast were these things moving when they went out of there? They can travel 1,000, 2,000 feet a second. A second? That's faster than sound. Right. They'll, they'll move faster than the speed of sound. These things will actually get in front of the shock wave and hit you before the shock or the pressure wave does. You're hit before you even hear it. That's right. Here's what the blast looks like using a high-speed camera. An intense ball of fire less than 20 feet across. But watch the white rings on the desert floor. That's the shock wave. Engineers studying this blast say there's a lesson in here for first responders. Let's say I'm a first responder. What do I need to be aware of when I come up on a scene like this? Well, there's a lot of shrapnel around. It's very hot. It's very sharp. You could easily cut yourself. Uh, uh, there could be unexploded ordnance, uh, parts of the bomb that are still left over that didn't explode when it was supposed to explode. That could go off at any time. But for potential bystanders out of this demonstration, there are only words of caution. By the time you hear the boom, you could already be hit. Awareness of your surroundings could be the only defense. David joins me now. David, that is just incredible to actually watch that and watch the shock waves and that you felt it a quarter mile away. I mean, it just gives me a whole new appreciation for what uh, people felt at such distance. Um, you're talking about, I mean, how easy it is for people to make these bombs, you know, in a pressure cooker. What surprised you the most about what you saw? Well, we commissioned the experts at New Mexico Tech to do this demonstration for us. What surprised me, uh, less than $100 worth of material and access to the Internet, and you can build one of these bombs. They're crude. They, they are uh, very uh, difficult to uh, police. But what we're seeing, based on the test that we had there, was how fast the material flies out once that uh, gunpowder or whatever explosive material is being used actually blows up. You heard him say... That material was flying out at uh, faster than the speed of sound. So you could literally be hit and hurt before you even hear the bomb go off. Wow, that is amazing. And then when you talk about them going uh, faster than the speed of sound, uh, when, when you, obviously you said they did this at your, you know, you commissioned them to show this sort of an explosion so we could learn about what happened in Boston. But, but as you said, this is where, what they do for a living. They do these kinds of explosions to see what terrorists might do. What do they say about the kinds of explosives and bombs they're most worried about? Well, in this case, what they were looking at with this pressure cooker bomb that they set off there, they were able to do this in a controlled setting so they could get a real idea of the physics behind it to be able to look at the blast patterns and how to protect first responders when they first get out there on the scene so they know what to look for in terms of residue, in terms of uh, uh, explosive material that may not have gone off. There's a lot of things that can still hurt them when they first get to the scene other than the bomb itself that's just gone off. And they're going to be taking this information to Washington with them. In fact, some of them are in Washington right now uh, working with some government agencies, including Homeland Security.